Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five day per week wisdom and legacy building podcast. This is day 514 of our trek, and today we are starting a new series called The Tools in Gramps' Backpack. Each Monday for the next 20 weeks, we will explore a different tool that is needed to equip parents and grandparents to train their children and grandchildren to be successful on their trek of life. If you don't have children or grandchildren of your own, use these tools to train others that you do influence. Today, the first tool in Gramps' backpack is knowing Jesus. Maybe it's a male perspective, but I love tools. When I go into Lowe's or Home Depot, I enjoy seeing all the tools and have dreams about all that I could use them for. Tools help us to perform tasks that would otherwise be impossible. In the same way, the tools that we'll explore over the next several weeks can help us to have a legacy impact on others that would otherwise be impossible. Email me at guthrie at wisdom-trek.com and let me know how these tools help you and if you have any other questions that you would like to ask Gramps about our trek of life. We are broadcasting from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. Since I am recording this before our open house, I will report back on how that went on Wednesday's podcast. As I think about our open house, we have invited people that we know and consider friends. This thought applies to the first tool that we will explore today. To consider someone a friend, you must know them. And so it is with knowing Jesus. The first tool in Gramps' backpack is a living, loving relationship with the Son of God, who is Jesus. John the Baptist understood this as he recorded in John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He was the Son of God, but he wore a crown of thorns. He was the Savior of mankind, yet he was put to death on a rough-hewn cross. He offered his healing touch to an unsaved world, and yet the same hands that healed the sick and raised the dead were pierced with nails. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was born into humble circumstances. He walked this earth not as a ruler of man, but the Savior of mankind. His crucifixion, a torturous punishment that was intended to end his life and his reign, instead became the pivotal event in the history of all humanity. Christ sacrificed his life on the cross so that we may have eternal life. This gift, freely given by God's only Son, is the priceless possession for everyone who accepts him as Lord and Savior. Why did Christ endure the humiliation and torture of the cross? He did it for you. His love is as near as your next breath, as personal as your next thought, more essential than your next heartbeat. What must you do to respond to the Savior's gift? You must accept His love, praise His name, and share His message of salvation. For this tool to be effective on impacting the lives of others, you must conduct yourself in a manner that demonstrates to all the world that your acquaintance with the master's tool is not a passing fancy, but that it is, instead, the cornerstone and the touchstone of your life. Indeed, Christ is more than a tool. He is the master tool of all other tools, for he is required for the other tools to be effective. Oswald Chambers put it this way, The only source of life is the Lord Jesus Christ. As for Jesus' position, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9 says, What we do see is Jesus, who for a little while was given a position a little lower than the angels. And because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. C.H. Spurgeon summed it up in this manner, Infinite and yet an infant, eternal yet born of a woman, supporting a universe and yet needing to be carried in his mother's arms king of angels, and yet the reputed son of Joseph, heir of all things, and yet a carpenter's despised son. John chapter 4 verse 14 in the voice translation explains it so well. The voice took on flesh and became human and chose to live alongside us. We have seen him enveloped in undeniable splendor, the one true son of the father, evidenced in the perfect balance of grace and truth. With these thoughts in mind, we will conclude our trek for today and close Gramps' backpack. Before I do, I will pass this tool that we have explored onto you. It is up to you to use it to train your children, your grandchildren, or anyone else that you have an opportunity to impact. Tomorrow's trek, we will explore another wisdom quote. This three-minute wisdom supplement will assist you in becoming healthy, wealthy, and wise each day. Thank you for joining me on this trek that we call life. Encourage your family and friends to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past daily treks or read the daily journals, they are available at wisdom-trek.com. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. 
And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.